Um, uh, let's start with the news today uh, out of Russia uh, that, um, you know, a, um, uh, what is his name, Maganov, Maganov, uh, a, uh, who is a senior businessman, an oligarch uh, in Russia. Sec he's uh, the chairman of Russia's second largest oil company, uh, Luke Oil, um, was found dead at the bottom of a hospital window at the bottom of the hospital window. So uh, theory is, as these Russian theories go, theory is he committed suicide. So the 67-year-old plunged to his death, although uh, the news says circumstances surrounding his fall were unclear. <laughs> it turns out, though, that a bunch of Russians have been falling to their deaths out of apartment buildings and hospitals and office buildings in the last couple of years. That's why I called it Russians falling out of windows. Weird. Who knows? Maybe this is the, maybe the radioactive stuff takes too long and too risky to uh, eliminate your opponents. Maybe just throwing them out of windows makes more sense. So uh, it, it, this falling of, of somebody involved in the oil company seemed a little weird. Um, and um, so I looked it up a little bit, and there was an article uh, in Newsweek called, uh, <laughs> the title of the article is, Russians myst keep mysteriously falling off from windows to their deaths. I'm not making this up. It's an article in Newsweek. Um, and um, this is not even the list, which we'll get to in a minute, of all the oligarchs that have died since the Ukraine war started. Now, I just want to remind you, this is, this is Russia that Jordan Peterson and many people on the right say is our ally, is our friend, is the West. Uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't say anything negative about them. Um, and, and Donald Trump once said, uh, when, when he was told that Putin kills journalists, Donald Trump's response was, well, we kill people too. Why is that a big deal? Well... I'm sure you could probably combine a list of Americans falling out of windows. But let's just take this list. Let's just go with it. It's fun, right? Uh, Russians falling out of windows, I guess, is, is morbid. But um, here we go. So in December 2021, Yego Prosvinin, the founder of a nationalist website Sputnik and Pogrom, died after falling out of a window of a residential building in the center of Moscow. He allegedly first threw a knife and a gas canister out the window, and then he fell. Maybe he was using it to break the window so he could, he could fall out of it. Um, he, was, uh, he was a supporter of the annexation of Crimea, but then uh, predicted a civil war and collapse of the Russian Federation. Not a good message before you go to war. On October 19, 2021, a Russian diplomat was found dead after falling from a window at the Russian embassy in Berlin. Well, it turned out he maybe wasn't a diplomat, but was probably an undercover officer with the Russian FSB. It also turned out he was the son of General Alexander Zalo, the deputy director of the FSB's second service. So who knows what's going on there? In late December 2020, Alexander Kagansky, a top Russian scientist reportedly working on a COVID-19 vaccine at the time, was found dead with a stab wound after falling from his high-rise apartment in St. Petersburg. Supposedly, he stabbed himself and then fell out the window. There are also reports of healthcare workers falling out of hospital windows, some to their deaths in Russia during the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> I don't, I'm just reporting the news. I don't make it up. And in this case, I don't even know how to interpret it. So it just is what it is. In July, now this one is interesting. This one is really interesting. In July, Dan Rappaport, a 52-year-old Latvian-American investment banker, an outspoken Putin critic, I mean, this guy really went after Putin, was found dead after falling from a luxury apartment building in Washington, D.C., Police say they don't suspect foul play, but the case remains under investigation. This guy, I remember this guy. He's a, he's a private equity fund guy, I think. He had a lot of investment in Russia, made a lot of money 
in Russia in the in the 90s and 2000s, and then turned on Putin and was this extraordinary critic of Putin's. And um, he claimed that his life was in danger, claimed that they were trying to kill him. Well, he's dead, falling out of a window. It seems like there's a pattern here. Maybe this is the way we get rid of um, get rid of political political uh, uh, opponents. Rapoport's friends fear he was assassinated. Um, that the whole thing is highly suspicious. Um, and uh, anyway, that's a Rappaport. Uh, Rappaport, by the way, <laughs> Rappaport's former business partner, I shouldn't laugh because people are dying here. Rappaport's former business partner, Sergei Kachinko, Sergei Kachinko, fell to his death from a Moscow apartment building in 2017. Russians falling out of windows and dying. This is, this, is, this is much cheaper than radioactive poison. It's much cheaper than poison-tipped umbrellas, uh, which is the traditional way in which uh, the Russian Secret Service have been killing people they don't like. I guess now they just throw them out the window. Sometimes they stab them first, and then they throw them out the windows, which is an obvious strategy for suicide. Stab, jump. I would do that. Um, all right. Now, that's not the only thing, because there's, a, there's an overlap here, because the guy who jumped out the window today, or yesterday, was an oligarch. So the other avenue of research is, well, uh, oligarchs, what's the life expectancy of an oligarch in Russia these days? Um, and it turns out, not very long. It turns out that seven Russian oligarchs, seven Russian oligarchs, have died under kind of mysterious circumstances in recent months. So I'm going to read you this. Now, this is morbid, and this is, uh, some of this is brutal. So bear with me, I guess, because this is a little kind of spooky. Um, so, but let's, let's go through this. Um, uh, uh, let's start with Sergei uh, Poten Potosenia. This is a, a millionaire oligarch was found hanging in a rented luxury villa in Spain on April 19th of this year. His wife and 18-year-old daughter were also found dead in their apartment with stab wounds. The police assuming this is a uh, murder suicide, that he killed his daughter and his wife and then committed suicide. Other family members doubt this. You know, so there's a lot of a lot of people questioning this interpretation of it. But Okay, one, murder-suicide, maybe. That's, you know, let's not jump to conclusions. So let's look at a week earlier. Uh, Vladislav Avayev was found dead of a gunshot wound in his Moscow apartment. This is April 18th, so a week earlier, along with his wife and 13-year-old daughter. Now... Uh, the first guy was involved in um, in a gas natural gas production company. Uh, this guy is the former vice president of Gazprom Bank, a privately owned subsidiary of the Russian energy giant. And the police investigating this as a murder suicide. So he killed his wife and daughter, and he killed himself. Two in a week. Okay, and then there's Vasily Melenkov. Vasily was found dead in his apartment in uh, Novo, Nov, Novgorod, <laughs> Novgorod, Russia, right? On March 23rd, so like less than a month before this, the billionaire, billionaire was stabbed to death, as were his wife and two sons, 10 and 4. The murder weapons were found on the scene, the police are investigating the theory that Malenkov killed his family and then killed himself. Three in a month. Three murder suicides in a month, all related to, uh, what was he a billionaire of? He owned a medical equipment supply company, but all oligarchs, all Russian oligarchs, Now, well, supposedly, he was really hurt by Western sanctions. So he killed his four-year-old kid because he was hurt by Western sanctions. Really? 
And then there's Mikhail Watford, who's a Ukrainian-born oligarch, also in Russia, uh, Russian, was found, uh, I mean, uh, Ukrainian-born, uh, but uh, affiliated, associated with Russia, uh, was found hanged in his garage in his home in Surrey, England on February 28th. Uh, he had moved to, uh, to the 1960s after he's made his fortune in oil and gas, right? Um, the Surrey police, they're investigating uh, it, but uh, they don't think there's anything suspicious at this time. Alexander Chulkayov was found hanged in an apartment garage near St. Petersburg on February 25th, just three days before this other oligarch. Um, police told the Gazetta that they found a suicide note, conveniently, right next to his body. Uh, Any more? Yeah, Leonard Shulman, according, uh, another top gas bomb executive, was found dead in a cottage in the same village in January, uh, in January before the invasion. Um, again, suicide note, two hangings, suicide note. I guess they went from hangings to murder suicides to throwing people out of windows. And then there's Alexander Subotin, a former top executive of Russian oil company Lukoil, was found dead in his house in some place in Russia. Um, he supposedly suffered a heart attack, um, but a source told TASS, the news agency, the Russian news agency, that he had arrived at the house in severe alcohol and drug intoxication the day before and was found dead in a shaman's house in a room used for Jamaican voodoo rituals. As I said, I don't make this up. Um, Russia, this bastion of Western civilization, this beacon of hope for the West, because again, it's anti-left, uh, seems to be killing off people off in ever more creative ways. And it seems like children um, involved in this as well, and maybe voodoo. Maybe the voodoo was used to cause the murder suicides. That would save you on Hitman if you could just voodoo them out of existence. <sighs> that is Russia. That is Russia. Now, it could be that there's just a lot of depressed people in Russia. It could be that there's just a, a, a lot of confused people in Russia. I mean, after all, suicide rates in the United States are very high, particularly over the last, uh, the last uh, two years. Um, uh, deaths as a consequence of overdose of opioids and other things are very high in the U.S. I think we'll do a show on suicide and opioid deaths soon. I've talked about this before, about the betrayal of, of uh, you know, by the intellectuals of the common American and, and the despair that so many Americans feel. And, um, and, and I think they're taking it out by, by taking opioids and committing suicide. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about that. We'll do a show on that. But so, I, you know, maybe this is just that. But it is a little suspicious that these oligarchs, that they all have some relationship, or most of them have some relationship with the oil and gas business industry. Uh, most of the, these deaths happened after the war started. Very, very strange. Somebody's killing somebody off. And in the, this is, of course, in the context of uh, Dugin's daughter being assassinated um, last week um, in a failed attempt to assassinate Dugin. His daughter got killed in his stead. Well, I'm glad I'm not going to Russia anytime soon. And if certainly if I go to Russia, I, I, I'm asking in the hotel for a, a first floor room, first floor room. Although, you know, I could still commit suicide by hanging and leave a note. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for those of you 
who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.